consoles went 3D back in the 90s, game types that remained mostly unchanged for years had to be completely redesigned from the ground up. The Legend of Zelda The Ocarina of Time was the game that defined how action-adventure games and how polygonal sword fighting should work. It was an instant classic and it's one of the greatest games of all time. Nintendo sticks extremely close to that Ocarina blueprint with Twilight Princess for the Wii, which means you're getting some expertly designed gameplay and puzzles and some exciting action. But it's that same similarity that makes for the game's biggest issue, a real lack of evolution. The game opens as you'd expect. Link is a young adult who lives in a small forest village, herding goats and learning how to use a sword in his spare time. Just as he's to leave town and head to Hyrule Castle to deliver a gift to some princess named Zelda, all heck breaks loose. Darkness is sweeping over the land, and it's going to do so quite literally this time around. Parts of the kingdom are covered in eternal twilight, and this dark realm causes Link to transform into a blue-eyed wolf. It's here that you meet up with Midna, an impish little shadow world creature who will act as your guide through much of the game, pointing out items of interest and giving you hints in a few situations. Your first goal is to simply clear the twilight from the land and restore it to its normal state, freeing its inhabitants. But this is really just the game's first act. Before it's over, you'll be traveling back and forth between light and shadow, collecting a mess of items, stomping through temples and dungeons, and obviously, saving the entire world from evil. It's hard to view Twilight Princess as some sort of technical masterpiece, but from an artistic perspective, this game really looks terrific. A large part of that is due to the way the shadow world and its trappings look. When you change forms or teleport, Link gets broken up into these cool black squares that reform in your new shape or location. It's a really neat effect that stays cool from start to finish. Speaking of start to finish, Twilight Princess is much longer than the average action adventure is these days. You can expect to spend somewhere around 35 or 40 hours playing this before you'll finish it, though if you take time out for the many different side quests and minigames, that number continues to go up. While you can earn item upgrades by completing some of these side tasks, none of them are very useful. The sound in Zelda is sort of like the graphics. The music is artistically terrific with lots of great melodies, many of them originating in previous Zelda games. But technically, it's still a bunch of sample-based synthesized music. Considering the Wii is the system that finally gives Nintendo a more standard format with more room for data, and considering the standards for video game music these days, it's surprising that this game wasn't given a full orchestral treatment. The same can be said for the way the game tells its story. The entire game is done in text. At this point, that's practically ancient. Maintaining Link's silence is one thing, and, and sure enough, he doesn't have any lines of dialogue in the game. But in this day and age, everyone else in this game should speak. Buttoning your way through pages of dialogue during cutscenes is pretty disappointing. The unique features of the Wii controller come into play in a few different ways. Mainly, you use the Wii remote to attack. By shaking the remote, you swing your sword. There's no finesse to it, and it's just kind of a, a fancy button, really, except that a button would be much more responsive. The game compensates by rarely requiring you to time your sword slashes, but in the one case when it does come up, it's pretty weak. You'll also do spin attacks by shaking the nunchuck, and anything that requires you to aim can be done using an on-screen reticle by aiming with the Wii Remote, which usually works pretty well. The speaker on the Wii Remote is used a lot, too. Sword slashes, the chain sound from your grappling hook, and a lot of other sounds come out of that speaker in addition to or instead of your TV. It's a neat idea, but the speaker on the Wii Remote is really cheap sounding, so everything is tinny and distorted. On top of that, sometimes the sound doesn't play or cuts out halfway through or gets all staticky, so in the end it comes off as kind of lame. Overall, Twilight Princess is a great game that anyone considering buying a Wii should definitely check out. It's got a ton of that classic Zelda feel, but maybe it has a little too much of it for its own good. You'll love the game's great design and puzzles, but you'll probably also have the feeling that it could have been so much more with some presentational additions.